All right, so today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the basics of throwing. And I'm gonna be demonstrating for you a couple of essential techniques. We're gonna talk about the basic steps involved with creating a bowl or a fairly simple object on the potter's wheel. We're gonna focus on three basic skills. The first of those is called centering. The second is opening. And the third is pulling. And before we actually get into the process of going into those, those techniques specifically, we're gonna talk a little bit about some other general things you need to know before you start on a potter's wheel. First off, you're gonna need a few pieces of equipment. One of those will be a bat. Now, depending upon where you're working, your studio may or may not have bat pins in your wheels, um, but here in our studio, we do. And so we're gonna utilize a bat and there are little holes in the backside of the bat and those have to line up with the bat pins. So it's important that you use a bat when you're doing this, if you have bat pins, otherwise those are gonna beat your hands up pretty good. So make sure that you've got that available. You're also gonna need a bucket of water. You're gonna need a sponge and you're gonna need some clay. You won't need much else as far as tools or equipment go for the first few stages. So we're going to begin with a ball of clay, which has been wedged and prepared. And we're gonna start with that first stage, which again is called centering. Now, before I start centering, I wanna make sure that I'm close to the wheel. You don't wanna sit far back. You wanna make sure that you're in close so that you have good leverage. Your foot's gonna be on the pedal to control your speed and go ahead and turn your power on. One rule that you'll wanna make sure that you follow is that you don't generally want to touch the clay unless it is moving. So once you get it started, you're gonna get it up to an appropriate speed and then make changes with your hands as you work. So I'm gonna aim for the middle slap the clay down firmly to make sure it sticks and adheres to the bat. And then I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm gonna get it wet. Water is both a solvent and a lubricant when you are working with clay. And so you need plenty of water to help prevent friction. But if you use too much, particularly later in this process, your piece is likely to fall apart and begin to melt. So we're gonna get it liberally wet to begin. We're gonna get our speed up. We wanna go fairly fast at the early stages here. And I'm gonna do what's called coning, which is a form that we, we start with with centering. I'm gonna take my hands and bring it up into a cone shape. I don't want it to be tall and skinny. I want it to be more of a 45 degree angled cone. So I'm gonna start with pressure down and come in. And bring it into a cone. Once I have this, I'm gonna go ahead and change my hand position and I'm gonna be compressing the clay down. So I'm gonna take my left hand and almost like a karate chop, bring my left hand down hard against the bat. I wanna make sure that my pressure is down and I'm gonna come in. Now, if your elbow is flying and up and elevated like this, you're not gonna have a lot of leverage. So it's a really good idea to lean into your body to try to connect your arm into your leg Across the splash pan here, you can use the entire force of your body in order to give you some more leverage against the clay. So my left hand is gonna be coming in, my right hand is gonna come down on top. So I like to make almost like a little box with my hands. My left hand will be vertical, my right hand will be flat on top, and my hands are at pretty much 90 degree angles. I can use the fingers of this hand to wrap around the back side and help to support, and also kind of lock my thumbs together. As I get a little farther in, you'll also notice that I'll drop my thumb inside. The reason I drop my thumb inside is it allows me to help to kind of shape the form of the ball as I get it centered. Again, I'll add a little water. Left hand down hard, right hand on top. I'm going to compress. I'm applying pressure with my left hand, primarily the bottom edge of my left hand where my pinky is located, and using that to bring pressure in and tuck that in and create that vertical wall. Then my right hand sits on top, and creates that form as well. So right there. One problem that people often have at this stage is they'll get it to where it is basically centered and they'll be applying a lot of pressure. And if they're pushing and they're pushing and they're pushing and then they suddenly or quickly let go, the clay will actually bounce back out of center. So the clay has a little bit of a memory here. It will rebound. What you wanna do is you wanna apply that pressure, get it centered, and when you feel like you're centered, begin to slowly release your pressure. You'll also notice that my wheel is still moving. Don't stop your wheel in the middle of the process. Allow your hands to disengage first. You'll also wanna make certain that you're dead center before you move to the next stage. The next stage, which we're gonna talk about in a moment here, is again called opening. But don't proceed to opening until you've mastered this. Now, the way I can tell if my clay is centered, when I spin the wheel, I don't see any change. 
on the side and it's not vibrating or moving in and out. If I put my hands on it, my hands are completely quiet. My hands are still. And that's one of the best ways to tell. Some people aren't sure if they're centered early on in this process. And the best way to tell is to make sure your wheel is moving, to engage it with your hands, and see if your hands move. And if your hands are still moving, if they're rocking around back and forth, you're not centered yet. If you're still having trouble, focus by concentrating on your hands. Try to pay more attention to your hands than you do to the clay and do what you can in order to resist the pressure as the clay comes around and keep your hands steady and even. It's about gentle, consistent pressure, not about brute force.